Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of you recently told me about how on the day after the shootings in Valde, Texas, your 10-year-old neighbor presented you with a very challenging question. The question was, where was God? Where was God? Now, I don't think you have to be 10 years old nowadays to ask that question. In fact, I think a lot of us here today are, in fact, asking that question, not only about what happened in Texas, but what is currently happening in your own life. You are saying to God, God, where are you when my loved one died? God, where are you when I was suffering and facing death? God, where are you as my world is falling apart around me? God, where are you when I'm feeling isolated and alone? I believe there's a lot of reasons why all of us, like that 10-year-old, will ask the question, where was God? Where is God? Well, today in our second reading from Acts, God is telling us exactly where he is as we hear the witness of a man who is about to be stoned. If I can invite you all to open in your worship folder to page five, and we're going to look at the, the, the second reading, which is Acts chapter seven. And there, uh, when we get to that page five there, I'd like for us to pick it up at verse 56, the second sentence there. But this is going to be from Acts chapter 7, verse 56. And here is what it says. Look, Stephen said, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Again, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So as we are asking the question, where was God? Stephen is giving us an eyewitness to where he is. He sees heaven open and he sees standing there watching over him. The Son, God the Son, and God the Father. When you find yourself asking, God, where were you as I faced death, as I felt alone? Where were you? God is giving you this vision from Stephen. Heaven opened and the Son standing next to the Father so that you can be assured that God is right there with you. I am convinced, I'm convinced that God has given us this vision from Stephen because in the years and the centuries and the two millennia to come, we Christians were going to see a lot of believers die. It is estimated that some six million Christians have died throughout the years. And over the years, we're going to see a lot of people die in school shootings. We're going to see our loved ones die. We ourselves are going to face death. And yes, we are going to hear a 10-year-old neighbor come to us and ask, where was God? So God leaves us this eyewitness account of Stephen seeing heaven open and the son standing there next to the father so that when you face death, when you face your hardships, when you feel alone, you can be assured where God was and where he is. God has given you an eyewitness to the Son with the Father so that you know where he is. I believe also that God leaves us with this vision from Stephen because when we're asking God, where were you? He knows all that we're asking with that question. God hears us when we ask, where was God? He's hearing us ask, why? Why, God, did you let this happen? God, why didn't you stop them from killing my baby? 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or try this one. God, do you love me? God anticipates that we are going to ask this question, so he gives us this very, very clear vision that he is present with us, watching over us, Father and Son from heaven. God gives us this answer to our question of where was he? But how do you feel about that answer as your loved ones have died, as you face death, as you see the world falling around, as you feel lonely, how do you feel about that answer? Well, I know how we often feel about it. I think we feel a lot like the people who we find actually in this passage here. I believe that we are a lot like the people who are at verse 57, if you can take a look at that. This is how they felt about Stephen's vision. At this, they covered their ears and yelled at the top of their voices. They all rushed Stephen, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Very often, whenever we hear this witness from a Stephen, that's our reaction too. La, 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 la. We don't want to hear it. One of the things that I was taught as I was uh, studying to become a pastor was something a professor told us, and it was very interesting. And, and um, since then, I have, I have seen this happen many times. He warned us that there are going to be times when you show up to visit someone and they're not going to want to see you. They're not going to be happy to see you. So those of you who were, who were present a few weeks ago when Walt Volz stood up and talked about his experience as a chaplain during the Vietnam War, you understand what I mean. He shared about times when he, as a chaplain for the Marine Corps, would have to go and knock on the doors of a family and tell them that their son is not coming back. And they were not always happy to see him. And a lot of times their response was yelling and wailing and covering up their ears. One guy even went to go get a weapon. When Pastor Volts would show up, he would often come along with another person in the military just as security. We don't always want to hear this witness of Stephen seeing this father and son watching over us. It's not what we wanted. This reminds me of a time when I heard a victim of violence, say a mom whose daughter was murdered, give a speech about her experiences in the days afterwards. And she talked about how she was asking God, God, why did you let this happen? And so after her speech, I went up and asked her, I said, you know, ma'am, when you asked that question, I'm just curious, what answer were you hoping to hear? And she told me plainly, I really wasn't looking for an answer. I was just mad at God. Yeah, a lot of times that's how we feel. We lose someone who's love, we love. We ourselves go through suffering. A lot of times we are just mad at God. He is not doing what we expected him to do. We would rather see, instead of God, who's been shown to us by Stephen and his witness, we would rather see the hidden God. See, the hidden God is the God who does exactly what we expect. He is everything that we want him to be. In fact, the hidden God is a God that we create in our own image. Well, most often we would rather see that God rather than the God who Stephen is trying to tell us about in his eyewitness of heaven opened up. Stephen keeps talking. Even though we wish to shut him up, even though we wish to cancel him, he keeps talking and telling us exactly what he's seeing. God wants you to hear this message about where he is when you face death. He wants you to know that he is there, son, father, watching over you. He wants you to see not the hidden God, but the God who has been revealed. So this revealed God is the God as we see Stephen describing him. He is the God who does not do what we expect. So we go back to the passage and here's what, here's what Stephen says. He says, I see the son standing at the right hand of God. See the revealed God, right? 
not the hidden God, the revealed God, shows up in multiple persons who do what we don't expect. The revealed God is God the Father who could have saved his son and yet let him die. The revealed God is God the Son who could have saved himself but let himself suffer, be crucified, buried, and then unexpectedly rise again on the third day. The revealed God is the God who shows himself as you face death. The hidden God is a God who only shows up when people live. Again, the hidden God is the God who only shows up when people live. But the revealed God is God who also shows up when people die. See, Mary and Martha, two sisters who lost a brother, Lazarus, when they saw Jesus, the God they expected would have been there to heal her brother. And so when Jesus arrives, you know, four days after Lazarus is dead, they say, you know, Jesus, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. We expect God to show up and stop all death, but the revealed God allows death to happen so that you can see the resurrection. The revealed God is the God who answers when the 10-year-old asks, where was God? The revealed God is God the Father who so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. The revealed God is God the Son who gave his life so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. The revealed God is the God who shows up, who reveals himself even when there's death so that you know that he can give you life. The revealed God is the God who is with you when you face death, when your loved one has died, when the world around you is crumbling, when you feel alone and isolated. This God, the revealed God, is letting you know right where he is, watching over you, bringing you the reassurance and the promises of everlasting life, a heaven opened to receive you into eternity. Through the vision of Stephen that God leaves us, God is showing up at your place where you see death, at Robb Elementary School in Evalde, Texas, in your life that's crumbling. God shows up there with this vision of heaven opened and the Son standing right there by God the Father. And there is one other way, one other person in which God actually shows up on scene. He shows up also through the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at that passage again. Verse 55. But Stephen, full of the who? Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. To say that he is full of the Holy Spirit is also to say that God is fully present in Stephen as he shares his witness with the crowd. It is by the presence of the Holy Spirit we are now made aware there is a trinity. God who comes to us in three persons, a triple presence in the midst of our disaster. Without the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then when you face death, when you face hardships, when you face moral questions, what you hear is what the congressman from California said that he hears Jesus saying. Nothing. But when you have the Holy Spirit, you hear God proclaiming from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from prophets to apostles, that he is with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A few years ago, I encountered a professor of Buddhism, and I asked him, 
You know, why is it that you all believe in Buddha as God when Buddha himself denies the existence of God and that he is God himself? And so that professor of Buddhism came back with, well, you Christians also believe in a whole lot of things Jesus never said. I said, yeah, but we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit who spoke to us long before Christ was ever born and continues to speak to us even after Jesus has ascended. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through all those who Jesus Christ has given us. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He continues to speak to us even to this age. The Holy Spirit is also speaking through people like Stephen. People who confess their, their Jesus Christ even unto death. That's what a martyr is. A martyr is a person who confesses their faith even in the face of death. Well, the word martyr comes from a Greek word that means witness. Stephen is a witness who speaks even in the face of death. But so are you. All of you are witnesses. You're witnesses from wherever you are, the place where your loved one died, the place where you're facing death, the place where the world is crumbling around you, the place where you feel isolated and lonely. You are the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to this world. And so when a, a 10-year-old asks you, where was God? You don't worry about what you're saying. You didn't worry about what you were going to say because the Spirit of God spoke through you. All of us together are the presence of the Holy Spirit in this world, proclaiming the presence of a trinity to a world that still is looking for a hidden God. God has given the world your vision, your witness to how God has come to be present with you in your situation. A God where you know where he is, why he does what he does, and yes, that he loves you. So a word of encouragement that I would certainly like to give you is just one word. Look, that's what Stephen says right there in verse 56. His first word is look, as if to say all of you present here can see what he sees, heaven open and the Father and the Son in heaven. So I invite you all to look, look at Stephen's witness. See it through his eyes and how he's described it. Look at the words of the prophets in the Old Testament. Look at the words of the apostles. Look at all those who witness the deeds and the good things that Jesus Christ does. Look and see and know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is right here with you. So often we Look for, look for the hidden God, the God who looks the way we expect him to look, who does the things we expect him to do, and the one who we created in our own image. We're often angry when God does something different and don't want to hear it. But God gives us this powerful vision from Stephen this word of comfort, this witness of God, a revealed God who is present with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A God who is present with us every time we gather, two or three or more in his name, who's present right here with us. So when that 10-year-old asked you, where was God? You know what you answered? You want to know what you answered? You said, he is right here. Stephen gives us a vision of a God who is right here. He is right here watching over us, the Son right here watching over us, the Father, but also right here in the voice and the witness of one another. People who have seen God in their lives and profess Him and share Him with others. So today, I invite you all to go out into the community, go out into your world, go to the Evalde, Texas of the world and invite them to look. Let them see 
the way Stephen saw it, the way you see it, let them see a God who is with us in a triple presence, Father, Son, and, amen, Holy Spirit. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.